If ever you decide to give your body to someone, they should produce the papers just like you should. And when I say papers, make sure that they have a rundown of the listing of all the things that they have tested positive and negative for. There's no price that you can put on your health. And when I say request these blood tests, require that before it goes down, before it gets hot and heavy. Do this at a time where you're sitting at a table, where you're not kissing, where you're not getting hot and heavy. People shouldn't be able to BS you because you so hot, you just gotta have it. Baby, you ain't never got to be that hot. Hey y'all, <laughs> it's your girl Dr. Dina and I'm super excited about today's video because your girl love talking girl talk, feminine hygiene, sex, sexual health. Now before we get into these discussions of sex, your girl is living her best brown life here in Dana Point, California where I am staying at the Ritz Carlton. This video is not an effort to promote the having of sex. I know some of you guys love to get that mixed up with discussing sex, but I do think that that our babies are having sex, addressing and giving them information to arm them if they're going to, I think it's important. Of course, teaching that sex outside of marriage is not the most desirable situation, but if people are going to choose to do it, they need to be armed with information and not taught by OG junkie bobs on the street about their own bodies and their sexual health or the lack thereof. The reason why I'm talking about this today is because I'm usually sent emails from people like me who have grown up in highly religious homes or in the church. I grew up Church of God in Christ, Pentecostal, click like if you know what it is or if you grew up in it. I know that so many people share with me the idea and the thought that sex was not discussed. Sometimes when we get far deep into our religious thoughts and our beliefs, sometimes that can turn into the lack of teaching and more condemning or telling you you're going to hell quickly if you talk about certain things. But in reality, sexuality and sex are a natural part of life. Now deciding whether or not you have it before or after marriage can cause different psychological, spiritual, and emotional difficulties. Some things I do wish that I learned because I know it's essential and important. So let's get into some good dialogue. Let's be open, let's have that girl talk. Grab a drink, grab some coffee, do something, grab a friend, share this video. This is not the substitute for any psychological or medical intervention. So make sure if you're having problems related to your sexual health or other issues, you are getting to see your doctor. And y'all, don't forget to thumbs up this video if you like it, comment, share, and subscribe. And also click on those notification bells so you can know when I upload on Thursdays and Sundays. Make sure you also check out my Now That's Life podcast, which is now live. And you can check it out on all your major podcasting platforms. Links to my podcast can be found down below in the information section. Sex is a normal part of life. Your sexuality, what you're determining about yourself, what you're learning about yourself, and no one should ever make you feel bad about that. But bringing that into your life before you're ready can cause you spiritual, emotional, and some physical difficulties. Now, while sex and our sexuality is a natural part of our lives, I think it's realistic to say Say that we also need to think about the repercussions or the consequences, good or bad, that sex can have in our lives. Now, I know what I was taught, that sex is to be kept within the confines of marriage, and I do realize, however, that's not always happening. I lost my virginity. I lost it later in life, and I did have sex outside the confines of marriage. However, there are some things that I wanted to learn and I wanted to know about myself that I didn't necessarily learn before that time came. And I think it's to make sure that you're engaging in self-care and taking care of yourself even outside outside of sex. I'm always trying to encourage you guys to take control of your feminine health and make sure that you're using more natural means, especially while on your menstrual cycles or your period, because you can do irreversible damage to your body and to your V if you're not taking the utmost care of it. You all know that I've always been on the hunt for the best in the naturalist pads, tampons, and other care items. And that's why I'm happy once again that Lola has made today's video possible. I'm so happy to be partnering with them for today's video because they really do promote feminine health. They know that a lot of products that we use in our feminine areas often contain synthetic and harsh chemicals. Did you know that the FDA does not require that a company releases all the ingredients in their feminine care products? Lola ensures they are completely clear on their ingredients, including the 100% organic cotton used in their tampons, pads, their liners, their wipes, and their other products. Lola makes everything super easy. They're completely plastic and BPA-free in their product ingredients 
shipments and they make it so that you can customize your shipments with them monthly and know exactly what you're going to get straight to your door in terms of pads, liners, wipes, different things that we need for our monthly lady times. You get to determine your product type, the frequency, and the quantity of products you receive monthly. My monthly Lola box comes with the tampons, which range from everything from light to super. Of course, they're all natural and cotton. The greatest thing is that the box is sleekly designed. Everybody doesn't have to know my business. And these are straight to the point. I know exactly what I'm getting and I know exactly what I'm not. It's because I know that it's important to you guys, just like it is to me, to know what's in the things that I'm putting in and on my body. For 40% off all subscriptions, visit mylola.com right now and enter code Dr. Nina for your subscription. One thing I like to tell people I work with, consult with, treat, whatever, is don't be pressured into doing anything. Nobody else should be choosing for you when you have sex or when you choose to have sex. I don't care if you've done it before. Ain't nobody got the right to tell you when and where, how and how to drop it. You put down boundaries and you make yourself worth that weight and that time. And if that person doesn't deserve that, you don't give it away. That's your precious lamb, your loved one, your beauty, your one and only. It ain't like you mess up one time and you get a new vagina so you need to make sure you're in control of that decision and that nobody is forcing you one way or the other to make a decision that you may not be ready for let me tell you this no wrapping up no going in if someone would rather put you at risk for something or have you worrying while you're having sex then you definitely don't want to risk your body on that kind of sex you want someone that's going to treat you with the utmost respect and also themselves if you're gonna be having sex you need to protect yourself and they don't want to baby turn that d or that v down you deserve more, you deserve someone that's going to cherish your body and you should be cherishing your body. No one should be in control of what you choose to do and nor do you need to be off in a corner somewhere sweating like a crackhead because you think you might be pregnant or have something. If you have to sit up for 30 minutes and convince somebody to protect themselves and you, you already should be dried up by the time it comes time to do it anyway. You're already having sex and putting yourself at risk. Now, I'm asking you to add less risk to the factor and you're refusing? You don't deserve to get it. So y'all have seen some of my oldest shower care routine videos. In fact, my most recent one, I'll make sure that I link right there for you. Make sure that you check that out. But the biggest thing that I love to do is make sure that I get in the shower, I wash my body, body down but I also make sure that I take time for the V and I only wash it with these things right here my hands my clean hands and I usually use my foaming cleanser by honey pot and make sure that I'm cleansing as best as possible but not over scrubbing because again you're not rubbing down a baseball bowling ball or basketball okay it's your vagina be careful with it you only get one but outside of nice cleansing washes that are all natural if it ain't water it ain't touching it. Y'all know that I like to keep a nice tame area and I don't like the bushes to get unruly. Now while I love hair removal, I do not get waxes because it just does not work for my skin. I've had many different types from high price to mid price to low price. It just does not work with the chemistry of my skin. So I do use my Chic Hydro Silk, which has the two ends to it, which really gives you a really nice, smooth and close shave. And also the electronic ends allows you to trim the hair first. In fact, I like to go get my scissors, cut it down first, and then use that trimmer, and then also kind of shape the hair up or cut it completely off. And I've not had problems since I've used that, along with the aid of a nice shaving cream or conditioner. Now, I choose not to shave everything completely off because the itch demons will get to you. And if they do, I do like to cool and soothe with a little bit of aloe vera, lavender oil, or even witch hazel, which tend to soothe the area without irritating me. And it also helps to soothe any razor bumps that might occur. But I get those very so. I always encourage others to take care of your body for you, not just because you're going to engage in sex, not so that you're the most fresh for your sexual partner, but make sure that you're fresh for you. You'll take more pride in it that way. I try to make sure that I take the best care of myself. I go to my doctor yearly. Yearly, I get pap smears and physical exams. I want to know what's going on with me. And I want to make sure that even if I haven't been having sex in between, baby, that everything is clean and clear and under control by blood tests and also examination. We're going to do a video soon with my doctor who's agreed to talk with you guys even more about the tests that she gives me. She tests me for everything known to man. I get blood panels ran for like 50 plus things, including everything from hepatitis to herpes to AIDS, syphilis to gonorrhea, chlamydia. And to be clear, baby, that ain't all gonna come up on a pap smear. So you need to request and open your mouth <coughs> 
and say, hey, can you please give me a blood test? It makes you safer, it makes everybody else safer, and you'll be better for it. Knowing your status gives you power. No matter what's going on with you down there, it's better for you to understand what it is so that you can handle it. And also so that you're not out here being a reckless endangerment. And while some of y'all about to sit up here and say, well, you shouldn't be having sex anyway, let's be real. People are. And how about the people who get married and they still catch something? Why? Because people are uneducated and they're refusing to go to the doctor to find out their status. If ever you decide to give your body to someone, they should produce the papers just like you should. And when I say papers, make sure that they have a rundown of the listing of all the things that they have tested positive and negative for. You should be very clear with your body. And I've heard y'all complain about the price of the passport test, which is what it's called, the blood test in which I get. Let me tell you this, there's no price that you can put on your health. At least you can try to set aside that money yearly for you to make sure that you're in tip top shape with your body and that you're taking the best care of it possible. And if not, that you can treat whatever is going on with your body. And when I say request these blood tests, Babies, require that before it goes down, before it gets hot and heavy. Do this at a time where you're sitting at a table, where you're not engaging in sexual behaviors, where you're not kissing, where you're not getting hot and heavy. Those types of moments, that's when you should be having these discussions. People shouldn't be able to BS you because you so hot, you just gotta have it. You need to figure out what's going on with somebody <laughs> in their area and you in your area. This also includes bathing and showering often. Make sure that you have a body care routine that you love and you uphold. I have really rubbed off on a lot of people in my life, including my bae. He loves that I really take a good time to take care of myself, not for him and not for anybody, but myself and God. Cleanliness is next to godliness. I try to make sure that I take the best care of my body, not just for the noses of others, but I don't wanna to get to the point where I'm smelling myself. I wanna make sure I'm in the best shape possible for me so that I don't have to worry about what somebody else has to say about me either. It's about me and making sure that I love me, take the time and the care for me, and I stay my butt in the bathtub and I find out what works the best for my skin, my hair, my nails, all of those different things so that I'm just more appealing to myself because baby, I want to be sexy to me first. That if you are going to engage in sex, make sure that you pin right after sex, okay? Some of y'all are still laying up, talking about you wanna cuddle right after sex. Get your butt up and go and use the bathroom. That's the price of having sex. You need to make sure that you are cleansing yourself out. Drink you a cup or two cups, maybe even eight cups of water and cleanse your body so that you avoid that bacterial vaginosis, those yeast infections and those other infections that could happen due to the fact that you might even be allergic to something that was used during sex, maybe a lubricant or even the condom or the other barriers that you've used. Be careful with that. Get up and pee. It ain't that important to be all up coddled in somebody's arms for all night letting everything fester in there that was in there okay pick if you need birth control don't be afraid to discuss that as well as all of your other options birth control can cause ups and downs for different people there's so many different kinds out there on the market do your research figure out what might work for your body be willing to try a few i can tell y'all as a little bit older woman that i have tried a couple back in my day i've been with the nuva ring for years and i have enjoyed it some people have had problems with nuva ring that's because all of our bodies are not created equal you need to be staying in touch with your doctor you need to know what's going on with you. I know that when I was taking pills, they made me hormonal, they made me break out, they made me gain weight. They just weren't for me because of the hormonal dosage. With having a low dosage hormone, NuvaRing, it's really helped me to stay on top of it. Also, it's hard for me to forget it because the NuvaRing stays in and I take it out when needed. And there you have it. You don't have the issue of thinking about the birth control. One of the first reasons why I got on birth control was because of the abnormally ridiculous long periods I was having. So so it wasn't even for sex. It was to control some of the other hormonal things I was running into. So make sure you're talking to your doctor. Make sure that you're solving that issue. You're figuring out what works for you. Be willing to try different things and open your mind, honey. You might have to try a pill. You might have to try a diaphragm, whatever it is. Give it a shot and figure out what works best for you. The next thing is you may need lubrication and that is just fine. Not all of us are blessed to be rivers of running water at any given moment. And to be honest, those that say that they always slippery when wet, 
<laughs> not just when you get older, but also when you're younger. The misconception is that we're just supposed to be wet and ready at all times. And that's a problem, right? Because first off, you shouldn't be doing it unless you want to do it, unless that's your decision. And secondly, we just ain't wet like that all the time. So therefore, lubricant is something you might want to keep in your back pocket or your purse. Otherwise, it can turn into a nasty, frictiony, fiery type hell down there. Now, I've done some research, and there are some really highly recommended natural lubricants by gynecologists themselves. I've linked them down below in the description box, but let me give you some names. There's Pulse Water-Based Personal Lubricant. There's Uber Lube. Nativa Unrefined Coconut Oil. Nascent's Vitamin E Oil. Sliquid Organic Lubricating Gel. And I love the name of this one, Aloe Cadabra Personal Lube. Now, most all of these contain vitamin E, coconut oil, or even aloe vera. But make sure that you try out things and figure out what works best for you, what you might be allergic to, and what might not work for you at all. But don't be around here using no Vaseline and lotion. Lastly, but certainly not least, if you are a proud virgin, stay a virgin. No one should make you do anything that you do not want to do. If it's not your time, it's not your time. If you want to wait until marriage, don't let anyone shame you out of that. To be real, a lot of us probably wish that we had waited until marriage. And it's even okay if you want to recommit to yourself and become a virgin again in your head. Don't ever let anybody make you think that you have to have sex with them or do anything sexual with them for that matter. If somebody does that to you, they don't love you, they don't care about you or your well-being, and it's not their choice, it's your decision. You have to live with it. If you choose to give your body to the wrong person, you'll have to live with that decision for the rest of your life. Now, I ain't trying to scare you, but know that I've learned in my years that sex has more than one effect on certain people and on myself, so you have to think about about what toll it could take on you. More specifically, even emotionally. Do I believe in soul ties? I do. I had a good talk with a friend about this the other day. Sometimes we carry those people around with us forever. Not because we haven't gotten rid of them, not because we don't wanna be with them, but sometimes they just feel like they gotta check in with you, they gotta know what's going on with you, they gotta ask you who you're dealing with, all of that. And who wants that? If you don't want it, don't deal with it, don't do it. Just be careful, know what you want, be clear with your messaging, and also be picky. It's okay to be picky. Now, I hope today's video has been very beneficial to you guys. And we talked a lot about sex today. Mm -hmm, we did. And we had a really good time. Grown-up conversation. So make sure that you comment, share this video with someone who can use it, and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Beautiful brown baby doll. Peace. Special thanks to Jason Bowie of Trinity Media Solutions for co-producing and filming today's video. His information can be found down below in the information section. Thanks so much for all the love and support over on my new website. If you haven't already, go ahead and check it out and join me for new ways to interact with me, giveaways and prizes, weekly emails, as well as my free eight day supernatural video course, which is free when you sign up.